All right, guys, how's it going? I'm just going to try and squeeze a video in here in between the building work that is going on in this building. I've tried unsuccessfully for the past two days to get any kind of recording done. There's banging, there's sawing, there's God knows what else going on, and it's been going on all week. In some of my past videos, I've had the accusation leveled at me that maybe I'm not that impartial. And when I looked over some of my older stuff, I thought, yeah, you know what, maybe, maybe I've just been a little bit unfair. And as usual, there's two sides to every story. So right now, what I'm going to go over is AMD's fault in this whole Gameworks fiasco, because AMD has got a lot of blame to take for this. It's also going to give me the chance to explain one or two more things about the industry, how gaming works, a little bit more of the software side of things, which I don't really go into that often. So let's start by looking at Mantle. Right, Mantle. I'm pretty sure most of you know what Mantle is, the actual API, or Applications Programming Interface. Mantle is basically similar to DX12, DX11, OpenGL, Vulkan, that sort of thing. In fact, Vulkan is very close to Mantle. What happened was, a couple of years ago, AMD announced that they had created this API called Mantle to basically compete with DX11. And the reasons for it were, Mantle allowed lower level access to AMD GPUs, and it was also much better at doing multi-threading compared to DX11. And this was important to AMD because AMD CPUs especially were really choking on DX11 loads. They also have a bit of an issue with their graphics cards on DX11 as well, and you'll see more of that in a future video. But if you look at this slide, you can see Graphics Core Next as the core. That's the actual graphics card, the architecture. So if this was NVIDIA, you'd be looking at Maxwell or Kepler. Next, you see the Mantle driver, which would be the same as a DX11 driver. Here you have the Mantle API, which is basically the code that the graphics applications, in other words, a game, is running on. That would be the same as DX11, DX12, etc. So looking at this, you've got a game at the top, you've got the API, then you've got the driver, which goes between the API and the actual graphics card itself. Now, some people confused Mantle with Gameworks, saying that they were basically the same thing, but it's not the case. In this case, Gameworks is more like middleware, which kind of plugs into your graphics applications or your games. What NVIDIA has to do is make it compatible with the API. And currently, Gameworks is only compatible with DX11, and OpenGL 4, I think. I don't really follow OpenGL that closely, but that's a kind of high-level overview, both Mantle and Gameworks. It's probably easy to think that Gameworks is the only developer relations program that has ever existed because we hear about it all the time. That, of course, is not true. NVIDIA had a very famous program called The Way It's Meant To Be Played, which kind of evolved into Gameworks over the years. ATI, the graphics company that AMD bought out in 2006, also had a program called Get In The Game. The way it's meant to be played was far more successful off these programs. However, getting the game covered some pretty big games like Half-Life 2, generally considered to be the greatest game of all time. As I said, NVIDIA now has GameWorks and AMD actually has Gaming Evolve. Now, Gaming Evolve has kind of morphed into Raptor software and we don't hear an awful lot about it otherwise. But a few years ago, AMD put a lot of effort into Gaming Evolve. They realized that NVIDIA had much stronger developer relations and it was really paying off and they had to start competing better with the way it's meant to be played. There's an article on the Tech Report talking about all this stuff. There's getting the game there. 2003. Now this was back in 2010 when Gaming Evolved first came to the fore. Back then, AMD Developer Relations Manager, Richard Huddy, pointed out that the company has been working closely with game developers in other ways for quite some time, and not just a few of them. So AMD had been working with all the big studios and numerous smaller developers. The team speaks nine languages and is spread across Asia, Europe and North America. That could, of course, be nine people, yeah? <laughs> now, I have tried unsuccessfully to find a final source for this, but I can no longer find it. However, a bit later on, it was said that AMD had Gaming Evolved Engineers in the top 100 gaming studios. If you try to go through the top 100 gaming studios in your head, you're probably going to run out about 10 or 20. So clearly AMD had a rather large team out there, basically working on developer relations, working on getting AMD cards running better on games, very much like what Gameworks is today. But like I said, this all kind of petered out over the past year or two. Now, it's no secret that AMD is really struggling for money. And their headcount at the company has had a haircut more than once. And here's the thing. If you're a leader of a department and you're told to lose 10% of your people, these guys out in the field, most of these guys are the first guys to go. And due to a lack of money and having to cut costs, it would appear that AMD has really lost most of these Gaming Evolved guys. I don't know the truth of that, but that's how it looks like to me because AMD is now nowhere near what they used to be at. Here you can see back in March 2010, a bunch of games that had been given Ifinity compatibility 
I was really excited for iFinity back then and I bought another two monitors and a 5870 just so that I could play games in iFinity. It was a fantastic time. And that's a lot of games given that that series of cards was only released in September 2009. So basically six or seven months later, all these games had iFinity compatibility. And this is what these guys out there in the field, the gaming evolved engineers, were helping to achieve. They were even attempting their own open physics initiative known as bullet physics which was of course meant to be a direct competitor with NVIDIA's PhysX. And they were doing joint marketing programs, bundling, co-marketing, advertising. This was working, you know, this was actually working for AMD back then. And AMD had hit 50% market share and above around about this time. So it's not like AMD can't do it. They can do it and they did do it and it was being successful, but they seemed to stop doing it. Very much like what ATI did with getting the game back in the mid 2000s. Right, so okay, you can see how that is linked to Gameworks. They're very similar types of program, but what about Mantle? Where does that come in? Well, clearly Mantle can be used for creating games that run on AMD hardware. And of course, this was actually done on a few titles. Battlefield 4, Thief, Sid Meier's Beyond Earth, Plants vs Zombies got it as well and also Dragon Age Inquisition. AMD started talking about Mantle's adoption, claiming that it was set to be even higher than DX10 and DX11, and then they just pulled the plug. Now, obviously Mantle has morphed into Vulkan, which is great, because it's a low-level API that gives direct access to GPUs, including, obviously, AMD GPUs, and it will forever be closely tied to the GCN architecture. DX12 again, it's going to be great for gaming, but the issue here is this, NVIDIA has Gameworks for DX11 and OpenGL. There is nothing stopping NVIDIA having Gameworks for DX12 and also Vulkan. There is, however, something stopping NVIDIA from having Gameworks on Mantle. That is just totally illegal. Let me try to explain this a little bit better. Here we have a game. Let's call it Fallout 4. Up at the top here, you've got GCN, you've got Maxwell, you've got Kepler, you've got all the graphics architectures we currently have. Then you have the driver, where both companies can do driver work in order to improve the performance on their cards. Next, you've got the DX11 API, and then you've got Fallout 4, the game itself. With Gameworks, effectively what NVIDIA does is it plugs NVIDIA's own code directly into the game and forces AMD cards to run that code. Now, it's been said before, but Gameworks is a black box. Nobody except for NVIDIA really knows what's going on in there. That alone should sort of let you know that this is an unacceptable situation for AMD to be in. Your main competitor writes code that your graphics cards are forced to run on. And no matter what AMD does with the graphics drivers, their graphics cards will always be forced to run that code, assuming of course there is not an option to turn it off. So what exactly does AMD do to get around this issue? Well, it should be obvious by now. They had it in their hands. Mantle was the way around this issue. Because Mantle is a separate render path, so instead of going through DX11, and instead of being forced to run Gameworks code on their graphics cards, AMD had the ability. In fact, they had everything in place. They had the engineers at all these companies and they had the API to bypass Gameworks. And not only that, but they would also be bypassing any future attempt that NVIDIA cooks up in order to meddle with AMD graphics cards. Now, AMD has had to suffer this for years and they finally had a way around it and yet they gave it away. What makes this worse for me is that Vulkan was delayed, many DX12 games are taking a while to come out as well, and they really could have been pushing Mantle heavily, avoiding all the game work stuff over this past 18 months to two years. All because of what I believe is cutting back on engineers in the field. Now, creating a new render path for Mantle is not a trivial thing, but it's not that hard either. And we saw this at the start when Mantle first came out, when developers like Oxide Games said it only took approximately two man months of work to support Mantle in their Nitrous engine. It only required minor changes, and it was not significantly more code. And here we can see some internal estimates from AMD, which suggest that the port from DirectX 11 to Mantle is only a medium effort job, no worse than the port from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12. The low to medium effort for the consoles to Mantle is quite interesting. However, this one at the bottom, the low effort to port from Mantle to DirectX 12, is one that's worth remembering. If you just look at this from a purely business perspective, how many games are actually benchmarked over the course of a year? There's maybe 20 big games over any one year. 20 games that all the big technology websites are benchmarking regularly. AMD did not need 100 engineers out there. If it only takes two man months to do a render backend port, 
between DirectX 11 to Mantle, let's say it takes two engineers one month, pay them $200,000 a year, which is a pretty good wage, and send them to these game developers with the explicit purpose of porting their game to Mantle. That would come to the paltry sum of $8 million per year. $8 million and all the biggest games, all the games that are going to be getting benchmarked, would have had a Mantle render backend. This could have happened last year in the top 20 games. And here's the thing. All that nonsense in games like Project Cars, all AMD had to say was, we offered to send engineers to port the game to Mantle and it was refused. And then AMD would automatically have the moral high ground. And if you think about it, and I've talked about this before, but it's all about the benchmark numbers. We know that game works generally slows games down. It doesn't improve the frame rate. You get nicer effects and slower frame rates. You just get even slower frame rates on an AMD graphics card. So this would really put NVIDIA's GameWorks program to the test because you would have the mantle render path up against the DX11 render path with GameWorks and the DX11 path is going to have lower frame rates so long as the GameWorks effects are added. I have real doubts that Nvidia would go ahead with these things, like the way they did with The Witcher 3 a month before release. Do you honestly believe that Nvidia would add GameWorks to a game like that knowing that they're going to get slaughtered in the benchmarks? Then people would look at the difference in image quality and say, yeah, okay, you can see it's a little bit better looking, but it's not worth losing half the frame rate for. Which is really what GameWorks comes down to. Why is AMD not understanding these things? They could have been doing this for the past 18 months to 2 years, but they haven't been doing it. Instead, they've waited and waited on Vulkan and DX12. Now, I understand that you need to save money, but how much money has AMD lost watching their market share crater? in these past two years. What it comes down to is bad decision making, something that plagues AMD at a high level. It's not the engineers, it's guys at the top are just making the bad decisions here. And this was a terrible, terrible decision for me. What makes it even worse is that now AMD is really pushing hard for virtual reality with Liquid VR, which is of course, you got it, it is based on Mantle. So all this stuff that they lost by giving Mantle away, they are now trying to push again. Even though NVIDIA has GameWorks VR, the same concepts apply here. It's two different render paths. So NVIDIA's VR stuff is going to be done on GameWorks VR. AMD's VR stuff will be done on Liquid VR. It will come down to who has the best hardware, who has the best software, not who can meddle with the other the best. Again, maybe I'm being a little bit unfair here. If you're following the recent DX12 news, you'll know that AMD seems to have a pretty big lead. And that's great, yeah? We need them to be doing a lot better than what they're doing. And right now, while Nvidia doesn't have GameWorks capability for DX12, this is a great time for AMD to show what they've got. But do any of you actually believe that Nvidia isn't working really, really hard on GameWorks for DX12 right now? I can assure you that Nvidia is putting a lot of resources into that right now because they know that they're on an early hiding here in DX12 and they will not take it lying down because this is the easiest path for Nvidia to equalize or stack things back in their favor and it would never have been an option had AMD just stuck with Mantle. The good thing about it from AMD's point of view is if it's low effort to go from Mantle to DX12, it's low effort to go from DX12 to Mantle. Maybe it's time they resurrect Mantle again and maybe it's time to get those engineers back out there. Because now that DX12 is catching on, this stuff should be getting even easier. And there is no easier way for them to get themselves out the way of the harm that Nvidia can cause. Will they do it? Well, what do you think? Right, I'm going to bring this one to an end before I talk about it all day. As usual, there's going to be a bunch of links in the description below and a lively comment section. I'll catch you later, guys.